Okay. Uh, welcome everyone. And uh, am I audible? Okay. Good. Uh, okay. Let me share the slides. Okay. So. Uh, for this session, we will be looking at. Um, okay, let me just. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at change point analysis. So, what does change point analysis mean? So, uh, I think we have discussed this in the morning session as well. But uh, just to recap, so it's just identifying point in time where uh, like starts to talk about practice. Of Time to change. So, uh, for our analysis, uh, the best example would be uh, when the price of oil changes. So, the point where the price of oil changes, uh, we are going to be analyzing and finding that point by using this analysis. So, the reason uh, it's useful for detecting structural break in the data. So, uh, like, let's imagine that there was a constant increase in the price of oil and when there is a sudden drop of price you know, of oil we can de detect that point so uh, that's why we're going to be using change point analysis and the reason that we use this is to detect shift due to significant uh, uh, events like policy change or economic stock, uh, shocks so whenever there is a new policy introduced into the market we can like expect uh, there to be a change in price of oil and other commodities, of course. And where, whenever there is a like an economic change, like uh, change in GDP or sanctions and so on, so this helps us understand and predict the market behavior, uh, like for especially for oil and food and so on. So, uh, so your your uh, this week's project's objective is going to be detecting this behavior, the market behavior, in order to, um, like, uh, um, let's say, you have, you have an investor, right? So when your investor wants to invest, uh, you can give him, a, give him an estimate. So when, whenever there is a political change or a policy change, there's going to be, uh, like, a change in the price of it, right? So you're going to be finding out which kind of policy changes uh, have an increase in uh, like price of oil and which changes have a decrease. So that's why it's important. Um, so we're going to be looking at actually uh, three, uh, three methods, but here we have five, four, and I uh, actually forgot to put in the one here uh, but we can broadly classify them into statistical test and uh, the financial me method so this one we, we're gonna be uh, lo looking at uh, on tomorrow's session but for now we're gonna be looking at a uh, cumulative sum control chart and the petit uh, test uh, and yeah so let's start with uh, so the paint, not the PT test. So let's start with the statistical. Test. So when we look lo look at the uh, the community one, so it monitors. It helps us to take uh, this point by monitoring the community sum of deviations uh, from a target value. So your target value is going to be your mean. So whenever uh, the data deviates from the mean, it's going to de detect it. So this is not like uh, effective for large uh, data and for uh, a data that has many changes, many uh, points of changes. So this is not uh, like uh, good for our uh, data, but we're going to be looking at uh, it's uh, just to know why, right? So it's effective for detecting gradual changes, not sudden changes. And it is good for detecting single change points or fewer uh, points. So 
uh, if you have uh, looked at the data, we have multiple uh, point of range, so it's not uh, effective. So it's less effective for multiple change points or complex change. So we're not going to be using this uh, uh, method. But when we come to the build, uh, it's uh, like it's a dynamic programming, uh, or uh, which we are going to be using, uh, like. Uh, to prone an unpromising path and a linear number of data points. So uh, it's minimal, uh, it doesn't need much uh, cost. It's it's just, uh, we can use it to identify many points of change. And it's also useful to identify sudden changes. And yeah, uh, so, for the community one, it's mainly used to detect uh, a live from a live data. So what does it mean is uh, if you are constantly checking the data, like if you have a constant feed of the data, where whenever there is a change, it's going to de detect it easily because it's just one point of change, right? But if you have like a historical data with many points of change, it's not going to work. But the paint is uh, the paint method is based uh, with this type of data. In a in a, like like we're gonna see a code, uh, but the build is actually a part of uh, the rupture. Uh, yeah, the rupture package. And uh, the financial, uh, the financial uh, change point de detection is just a mode of uh, modeling the probability of a change point for each time step. So for each time step, it's going to find the change of thing. You're, you're going to be lo looking at this in PPL tomorrow. And uh, this one is also uh, similar. The Monte Carlo method, it stimulates the uh, samples from uh, posterior di distribution of change of points. So both have a similar wor working method and you're going to be looking at them on the ne next session. But what I wanted to add is uh, the binary segmentation method. And this is actually a good a good uh, like substitution for the cumulative one because uh, it has a better Accuracy, but it's uh, yeah, than the community one, but it's it's also used as uh, an active swap, like an active substitution for the community one. So that's why I included it here. So it's a method where that uh, recursively divides the time series and it will change in that series. So it's going to divide uh, the time series into segments. That's why it's called binary segmentation and for each segment it's going to look for these points so it's faster than the build uh, method but it's less less accurate and we're going to be looking at how it's less accurate and uh, and it doesn't guarantee an optimal solution so uh, for now for detecting the points i would recommend you to use a pair but you can do Further research and uh, come up with a better solution. So the, step, the steps are data preparation. I believe you have done this one and uh, with initial exploration, the EDA, then applying the either the statistical or the financial method. But it's also recommended that you use both. Uh, okay, just to cross check. Um, and validates is uh, so uh, at the end i think we have also discussed this in the morning se se uh, session so the end result is going to be uh, so you found the point right so let's say uh june 2010 there is a spike or there was a high change of price point right so you find you found that uh, results. So what you're going to do is you're going to try to find uh, the specific event that triggered the point of price, right?
So uh, it could be that, uh, let's say United Emirates uh, passed a new law or a new pol policy regarding the change the change uh, of price of oil or there was a war in the Middle Eastern or right so any type of thing so but you have to look for this event so that's and you're, you're gonna be doing a correlation between these two points the point the price and um, the event right so that's what you're going to be doing so that's what the validation means so after you have so uh, result interpretation, so interpreting the change points, so you have to match the detected point with historical events, as we have discussed, assess the impact of these events on the uh, price trend. So was it a positive change or was it a negative change? And how this, how much effect does it have? And like you have to provide actionable insights for the stakeholders. So after you have correlated, so the first one is detecting the events and the points, and the second one is correlating them, and the third one is uh, like communicating your results. So the challenge could be uh, handling the noisy data, just cleaning the data, using appropriate method for different scenarios. As I've told you, like we have like uh, at least five, which I've shown you, but you have to go uh, like uh, deeper and understand uh, how each method works and just come up with one uh, like best method in order to do uh, the analysis and interpreting the result in context of external events. So how much did the event uh, like uh, impacted the price? So, these are the challenges like you may have difficulty in finding the exact event that triggered this uh, change of price and so on uh, so as i have explained like what you have to do what i would recommend you to do is use multiple methods for uh, robust stress like so you may have different point of views and validate uh, finding with domain knowledge um so yeah uh i think that's it for uh, slides any questions and is it clear okay no questions um uh, yeah this is, is it clear okay so uh okay if there is no question, I think it's safe to go to, yeah, uh, examples. Okay. Uh, okay. So, can you see it? Can, can you see the, okay. So here is just installing the requirements uh, and importing the dependencies and then loading the data. After that, so this is for, um, I believe, by using binary segmentation. So let me try to explain the code. Okay, so th this is just uh, like um, loading the data and uh the second one is uh just changing the like the data type into uh date time because it was not in the correct for format and uh just uh the price uh just taking the value of the price into series and here you you have a lot of models but a little is best for economic one so that's what i used and then this is uh, just the extension for the binary segmentation. So B inside means uh, binary segmentation. Sorry. And RPT stands for rupture. So uh, it's uh, part of this package. And then the model equals model. And you're, you're going to be fitting the price series into this model. 
and the result is going to be quoted here. So here, uh, number of uh, here I have specified the number of uh, uh, like uh, the price points, like the change, like the change points to ten, and here is just the plot. So as you can see, it's not a good plot. Um, so as I have told you, in bias head segmentation is going to segment. The time rates and just try to find uh, high uh, like changes in that segment, right? So here in this head segment, uh, the highest point is around here. So it's not a good plot, as I've told you. It's not a good method. But here you can see it has de detected some of the points, right? So here there was an event that uh, like triggered a high de decrease in the price. And here, there was an event that that like uh, started a high increase in the price of oil. And here, the, there was a point where it uh, like started the increase of price of oil. So uh, you're gonna be finding these points. Like it's going to show you uh, like this, and you're gonna be finding the uh, events that occurred in this time. So this is a border uh, timeline. So in 2000, in, in the year 2000, in the year 2008, there was a lot of change in the year 2008. Um, so you're gonna be finding uh, like what were these points and so on. So as you can see, it's not a good point. It's not a good point because it means this one, this one, uh, this one, and a lot actually. Like, um, this one was a good point, but it missed it here, here, and so on. Right? So it's not a good point, a, a good point. Um, so is that clear? Like how you interpret it and how you can see the result? Nice. What about the ladies? I think uh, like you guys were quite good because I said guys. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, okay. Good. So the next one is for uh, the build test. Um, so uh, here I have defined a different mo mo model just to have a, some kind of. Uh, Change, but you, you can still use a little. And here is just the same result. Here I have defined a number of uh, changes, and here is the result. So you see, if you can see, it's a way much better result, right? So you can see here, um, it has detected this point where uh, an event occurred that resulted in. In a, an increase in the price of oil from 20 to 40 dollars and here there was another event that decreased to something like in the 20s um here there was an event that incurred that uh, triggered a decrease and uh, uh, an increase and so on right so you can see it has detected much of good points rather like when compared to, uh, compared to the binary segmentation right so you can see here like it has it has detected most of the events um, so this one is much better because but of course it's a, a bit more computation intensive than uh, a binary one but it's it re, it's yields much more better results but uh, like what I want to like, uh, like um, here, uh, it's not the number of actually. Uh, I have to correct myself. So the pain is not the number of uh, change points, but penalty. So what does a penalty mean? So a penalty means um, so there is a change between uh, like accuracy and the number of uh, the number of de detection of change of points, right? Uh, like point of change changes. So the penalty you have to uh, like toggle around or or play around with the number of penalty. 
because the higher the penalty, the more uh, the number of change po uh, points, uh, point of changes, but less accuracy. And uh, less the number of pen the uh, like the uh, penalty, the the value of the penalty, the less penalty, the less uh, point of change you may have, but the more accuracy. So this one is uh, like the only uh, thing that you have to play around with with this model. So make sure to like try different uh, methods or different numbers before de deciding what. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a better uh, plot, right? Don't, don't you guys agree? OK. Uh, OK, so here I just added uh, let ex to extract the checkpoint dates because if you want to uh, like go through like uh, like use these dates in order to find uh, or extract the events that occur on these dates but you're gonna be looking at a different method when you are uh, like uh, working with the financial change point detections but if you are using this model you can just add these results this code and it will uh, print the dates for you. So here you can see in the 1990, uh, like I think it was uh, the dates. Yeah, here in 1991, January 16 and so on. So you can just go through these events and try to find what happened there. Here it's just the same. So is it clear? Is paint clear? Okay, yeah, yep, so I'm just done with it. What are the other questions? No. Guys, I'm out double. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, so the last one, the cumulative one. Uh, so it's not a good plot at all because it's good to detect one or two points so if you can see it's not even close to the result uh, but like let's just look at how it works so uh, as i've told you if you are working with live data this is the best one because uh, it's good it's good for detecting just one point so it's good for that type of data so what it does is uh, you're gonna be uh, like calculating the mean of the price so you have the mean right so whenever there is a change of uh, value that deviates from the price it's going to tell you right so that's the basic uh meaning so uh so the cumulative sum is just uh, the, the data which is the price minus the mean whenever there is uh, so you're going to be de defining the threshold if you want so the threshold is going to be an amount uh, okay uh, you you guys can hear me okay nadia may, maybe it's your network or okay What I want to know, Nadia. I think you have to find the other second here. Okay, okay, good. So, uh, so as I as I was explaining, uh, so whenever there is a 
change uh, or deviation uh, that's much more than the threshold that you have set. If you have set threshold, uh, so it's going to be detected as uh, change or point of change. So here, if you can see the target mean is going to be you know, the mean of the price from the data and like the cumulative sum is going to be uh, like the data minus the mean. So it's going to be plotted, but as you can see, it can just detect one point, not more than one point. Uh, so uh, is this clear? Okay. Uh, so as we have seen clearly, uh, the, this one is much more uh, better, right? But only for this, uh, like for this uh, scenario. So for every scenario, uh, each model has its uh, like advantage and disadvantage. So you need to do your own research in order to come up with, uh, or in order to find the best one. Um, okay, so any questions, guys? Um, so that's pretty much it from my side. So uh, the floor is yours, if you have questions. Am I audible? <laughs> I'm doubting myself. You know, Sra in the address. Uh, okay, I'm audible. So, no questions from you guys. Is everything clear? Okay, yeah, Sra doesn't have any questions. Yeah, Yarisa? Okay, I'm going to make that same as it is. So, it's easy. Uh, so you have to do, like, uh, just try to do it with different methods in order to find the best one. And uh, just for, uh, like, as I've explained in the slides, for robustness and just for checking. So that's my advice. Uh, if you guys don't have any uh, questions, I think it's safe to end the session. So, uh, okay, yeah, this already looked. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for uh, 